Hello everybody and welcome to my complete set review of Kaladesh. This is a fantastic set. I'm super excited about it. We're going to talk about every single card in the set. And with no further ado, we should get going. Now, clearly, I am on my own here. And yes, I miss Brad too. But we're here to hang out and talk about magic cards, so let's talk about magic cards, shall we? First up is Acrobatic Maneuver. It's a white and two generic mana common instant exile target creature you control and return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control and then you draw a card. Uh, this is a very good limited card. It is doubtful it's actually going to see any constructed play. Uh, it does replace itself, which is the best thing you can kind of say in terms of going to constructed. It does replace itself and it gives you amazing into the battlefield triggers. It works perfectly with the new Fabricate cards. Uh, so this is more than likely something you're going to main deck in limited because you know, it gives you great value, and it draws a card at worst. So at worst, you're cycling something. Uh, of course, you'll need a target in order to cycle it, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, so this card is very good and limited. Probably not going to get there and constructed. Next up is Aerial Responder, the White Vampire Nighthawk, if you will. Um, so, or the Vampire Whitehawk. Eh? Mm -hmm. So for two white in a generic mana, you get a 2-3 Flying Vigilance Lifelink Flyer. This guy is really, really good. Uh, super, super powerful. Now, it's super powerful in Limited. It's probably not going to get there in Constructed just because, you know, Constructed just has so much stuff at such higher rates. But this is one of the best Limited Uncommons, period. It's one of the reasons that you would play white. You easily first pick this thing. Uh, it goes into every single Limited deck you're going to play it in. It is incredibly powerful. I like this card a lot. Aerial Responder. Now, next up is Aetherstorm Rock. Aetherstorm Rock is a two white, two generic mana rare bird. It is a 3-3 three, three flyer that says whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get an energy counter. And when it attacks, you may pay two energy counters. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on it and tap up to one target creature defending player controls. So this is a really nice example of a bomb rare. Uh, it's going to be fantastic and limited. It doesn't seem like it's that hard to generate energy counters. And of course, this gives you energy counters just for playing other dudes. So it's going to be great there. Uh, you know, you want to... Clearly, a 4-mana 3-3 three, three flyer is already good enough, but this just kind of puts it over the top. Not only do you get to make it a 4-4, four, four, but you also get to tap their best blocker. So that's really important. So this is a fantastic limited card. Probably has no hopes in Constructed just because it's kind of narrow, but you can definitely tell that in the world of limited where combat is absolutely king, this guy is fantastic. Next up is Angel of Invention. As it turns out, the Magic Mike spoiler. So we talked a little bit about this on Magic Mike's, but in case you didn't listen to it, it's a two white, three generic mana, two one mythic angel. It has flying, vigilance, lifelink, fabricate two, and because, you know, needed more stuff, other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And so this is our first instance of Fabricate. So let's talk about that. Fabricate is, Fabricate gives you a number. Fabricate of a number. And it says whenever this creature enters the battlefield, you put that number of plus one plus one counters on it, or you create that number of one one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. So you get choices. And choices are, are the, the <laughs> I don't want to use it, but this one time, I know I'm going to use this more often, but the bread and butter of magic is the idea that choices let you sort of dictate what you can do in the game. And the more choices, the funner magic is, because that way you can say, well, you know, I had these opportunities, all these decisions. Uh, you know, for me, it's always interesting because uh, the way I feel about sort of tournament winners and pro tour winners is that they basically just did a, you know, uh, they, they, they performed a series of decisions that won them that event. Uh, saw a really funny uh, sort of uh, uh, today, or not today I learned, but one of those uh, shower thoughts said, um, you know, there, there, are, there is a series of decisions. There are a series of things that I can do that will lead me to be a millionaire. Guarantee. There is a list of things, of actions, that if I perform them, I will be a millionaire. And, of course, that could be a whole host of things. You know, winning the lottery, for example, is probably the easiest one. Regardless, let's go back to Angel of Invention, because clearly this is a sweet bomb rare in Limited. It does possibly have constructed applications, but Avison more than likely has to leave in order for this card to see play. However, it's five mana. It's going to be a 4-3 Flying Vigilance Life Linker, or it's going to be a 2-1 that made two two twos. because, remember, it pumps all your other creatures. So not only does it help out when it immediately hits the board, but it's great one on an empty board, and it's great on a full complete board because it's giving you all of that advantage so this guy is 100 playable i'm sorry this girl whichever you know what i mean uh you know 100 playable all the time possibly in constructed but again i just don't see it until avison leaves uh next up is the the saddest weirdest hoser card that should have been here three years ago um is authority of the consoles 
Uh, it's a one white rare enchantment that says creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped and whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control you gain one life uh, so if you didn't know sort of what this one I'm referencing splinter twin was a card that was finally banned in modern and its whole shtick was to put it on a uh, creature that would uh, either untap uh, you know a permanent whether it's untapping Kiki Jika or it's untapping itself uh, for the splinter twin in order to activate itself uh, so yeah if that if this existed on the other side of the table and you're playing Splinter Twin, you basically can't win because everything you play enters the battlefield tapped. And not to mention your opponent is gaining a life every time uh, one of your creatures comes into play. So if you make, you know, 500 tokens, they gain 500 life. And a lot of times they were uh, just one fours. Uh, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to kill you. So this is the best hoser that should have been here years ago. It's a really weird card. Uh, I could actually see it seeing some constructive play regardless because I think the ability is very powerful. It's sort of a Kismet type ability. Kismet uh, was a four-man enchantment where your opponent's artifacts and creatures enter the battlefield tapped, and that was like a big deal. They thought that was you know an incredibly powerful effect, so it cost four mana. But nowadays, we just get it for one, and we get a bonus on top of it. So uh, the reason is, well, A, it, clearly it slows down aggressive decks. So when you're slowing down aggressive decks, anything that can hinder them is good. Secondly, it's gaining life. Thirdly, it, it stacks pretty decently. You know, you play a creature on gaining a life. Now you play a creature on gaining two life. Not the not the greatest upgrade, but it is something I, th I see as a potential. In limited, I, I guess I could see it. I, if this is one of those cards that I really think you have to see how it plays, and in limited particularly. Now in constructed, I can understand in terms of, you know, there's tempo and this gets down on turn one and that's a good thing. I can imagine in limited this would be quite the playable card because if I'm playing it on turn one, <clears throat> not only am I messing up every blocker they try to play because every creature they, they play enters the battlefield tapped, you're also getting value off every creature they play. And if they're playing fabricate stuff, you're also getting value on those creatures in play. So you gotta remember those triggers. But as long as you remember those triggers, this will be a fantastic card for you. Next up is Aviary Mechanic, uh, the sort of newish white main lion, sky, sky fisher, core sky fisher type of dude. Uh, one white, one generic mana for a 2-2 common dwarf artificer. And whenever it enters the battlefield, you may return another target permanent to its owner's hand. One of the most important words on this card is may. You may return a permanent. You don't have to return a permanent. So for Core Skyfisher, for example, there is no maze. You must return a permanent. This lets you have the option of doing so. And with so many Fabricate cards and other cards with great Enter the Battlefield triggers, whether they're giving you energy, for example, uh, this is a fantastic, fine, playable card. You need good two drops in limited period. And it kind of sucks to run this out on turn two, but if it's on the curve, you should always run it out. And it's more or less always playable. I, would, uh, I don't know if I would pick it early per se, but it's definitely one of those cards that should be in your white decks all the time very good i don't really see it in constructed because again the effect is kind of narrow it's just on a bear there's a lot of things you can do for two mana unless there's some crazy synergy or a sweet combo i don't really see it but you know let's not i wouldn't completely rule it out i would just give it a very low rating as it were and up next is built to last a one white common instant target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn if it's an artifact creature it gains indestructible until end of turn so here was an interesting factoid mark rosewater wrote on his blog that there is going to be no no more regeneration regeneration has left us and it's good because regeneration was weird and everybody's like well, let's keep regeneration let's not you know you remember when they try to do the rules text it's like five lines of text it's really awkward Regeneration to me sounds like an ability that was made when the game was first made, when everything was kind of weird and all the mechanics were kind of bad, you know, in some ways, clearly banding, you know, like it kind of, it's not banding bad, but it's pretty bad. And so nowadays, indestructible or indestructible until end of turn is going to be the new regeneration. And I love that because it makes so much more sense. There's none of this, like you tap it and it's got to be removed from combat. And sometimes that's a big thing, so on and so forth. <clears throat> so, uh, so built to last is a good combat trick, basically. Uh, it's a fantastic combat trick when you're dealing with, with artifact creatures. Uh, but clearly you should be playing it in your, like, I mean, in in your limited decks for sure uh, I don't draft it highly but I would play it in sealed almost all the time of course it depends on your spell count but it is very good uh, and it is very much playable uh, and it's a great combat trick and white needs those types of things so captured by the consulate is next It is a white and three generic mana rare aura it is an enchantment aura uh, the enchanted creature you enchant a creature you don't control that enchanted creature can't attack, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, if it has a single target, change the target to the enchanted creature if able. This is just a weird one. Um, it's really strange. It's basically a very expensive, rare pacifism, which is fine, 
uh, and, it, and it is going to probably eat another card. Um, it's it's arguably very powerful because it's it's changing the way that your opponent has to play the game. Every spell that they that they draw, it's going to target that creature, and sometimes it's going to be fine. Like sometimes they'll have an aerial maneuver or uh, acrobatic maneuver, sorry, uh, and they're like, sure, I'll blink my dude, and you lost your enchantment, and I got to draw a card, and I get to center the battlefield's effects, and that's fantastic, but that's very rare. More than likely, they might have to remove, like, use a removal spell on their own creature, uh, or a burn spell on their own creature, and, you know, it's not like this thing goes away once you target it. Like, they have to target it with something that either removes it, returns it, or kills it, and, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty powerful stuff. So this is a... I don't know about a bomb rare, because we'll get to that one next, but it's certainly a good rare, and I would not be unhappy to, to play it in limited pretty much in every single white deck that I could. Maybe worth splashing for. I think we're going to have to play with it and see exactly the power level of this card, but it is 100% limited goodness, and I don't see it constructed because it's just too expensive for what it does, but it's clearly sort of costed in a way that it was necessary for limited to work. Uh, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk is next. It is a two white, three generic mana mythic artifact creature who is a construct. It is a four or five vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, each player chooses an artifact, a creature, an enchantment, and a planeswalker from among the non land permanents they control and sacrifice the rest. So, this is tragic arrogance. This is tragic arrogance on a stick. And that's awesome, because if you watch my magic show, we talked about how this with uh, Eldrazi Displacer means you basically kind of have this Mondo combo that you get to Tragic Arrogance every turn or tra Tragic Arrogance as much as you want. And so Tragic Arrogance was another card that I think really snuck up on people. It wasn't really wasn't really hype when it first came out. People thought it was kind of neat, but, you know, how, how do you kind of take advantage of it? Like, well, when you're in a world where there's like a million tokens and a million creatures, well, something that only gives them one of them is pretty good. And like, sure, they get to keep their Planeswalker, but they don't get to keep all of their best creatures. They get to keep the one. And not to mention, this guy is definitely going to be your one, clearly, because he counts for an artifact and a creature. Or you get to keep two creatures, or you get to keep, you know, basically him and another artifact, because you get to choose him, you know, or you get to choose that artifact and choose him as the creature. So you get to really kind of slice and dice how you want this thing to work. Uh, to me, this looks absolutely costed for constructed. It is incredibly awesome. It is very powerful and, and limited. You're able to craft your entire our game plan around respond around resolving cataclysmic gear hulk that's powerful stuff uh which i think is absolutely amazing so this card is totally awesome i'm i'm expecting to see it probably in some fashion and constructed i don't know about a lot this is not doesn't look like just like tragic arrogance tragic arrogance was a great sideboard card this is probably a great sideboard card that there's nothing wrong with that because it's incredibly powerful it's stuck on a four or five it's you know it's it's built to it's it's costed to move as they say uh, so Cataclysm Gear Hulk is awesome. Consulent Surveillance is a white and three generic mana uncommon enchantment. And when it enters the battlefield, you get four energy counters. Woo! And you may pay two energy counters to prevent all damage that would be dealt to you by uh, by a source of your choice. Now, note that it doesn't prevent it to a creature. It only prevents it to you. So it's kind of a weird fog thing. Uh, it works clearly with all of your other energy cards. This, this looks like a card to me that... If you're playing a deck that needs energy counters, you're going to look for every card that produces energy, and this is this produces energy. Yes, it has an effect. Sometimes it's going to matter a lot, and that's cool. Sometimes it's going to matter a lot if you're able to prevent the damage from something that triggers based on combat damage. You know, if there, something says when you deal combat damage to a player, uh, or you know, or if or if this deals combat damage. Period. This is a card that can do that for you. So it not only gives you a whole bunch of energy, it has a really cool ability kind of tacked on, but it really needs that support. If this is your only energy sort of based card. I probably wouldn't play it uh, in your limited decks. I don't see this in constructed. It's just too expensive. But in limited, this this is kind of priced to move, but it needs to be in that energy deck. And if it is, the, you play this one pretty much every time. Consul's Shield Guard is next. It's a white and three generic mana, 3-4, uncommon dwarf soldier. When it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters, which is sweet. And whenever it attacks, you may pay a energy. And if you do, another target attacking creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Just like we talked about that regeneration replacement, here we see it on the console shield guard. Now, oftentimes these types of these types of bonuses have not been included 
uh, on decent creatures, is the way I would put it. Uh, a 4 mana 3 4 is a fine body. A 4 mana 3 4 with an upside is fantastic. It also gives you energy. It's a total may effect. You don't have to do that. But if you're, you know, if you're attacking into something and it's clear that they can't deal with a 3 4 and you want to make sure the other creature gets in or that the other creature matters, then absolutely you would take an energy and have it be indestructible at the end of turn. So that's totally awesome. This is a limited card through and through, but it's one that you're going to play in your white decks. Uh, my guess is, again, that 4 mana 3 4 is such a great rate that you're going to want to play it all the time. Don't know about picking it highly in terms of draft, but in, in sealed, 100% no question. Uh, and clearly, if you're playing with energy, it just gets that much better. So, Council Shield Guard, nothing in constructed. Good and limited. Very good and limited. Uh, Eddie Trail Hawk. Eddie Trail. A white and a generic mana, 1-2 common bird who flies... Which is, which is good. When it enters the battlefield, you get two energy counters. That's sweet. When it attacks, you may pay an energy. If you do, another target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. So clearly the Council Shield Guard, Council's Shield Guard rather, is, is sort of priced to move and priced to attack, and that's great. Uh, the Hawk just you know does a different type of effect for one energy. So it's really cool to be able to use these energy counters for different little tiny things. And again, I can only imagine the, 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 the happiness that development got to enjoy because they were able to have another sort of knob to, to turn and tweak and you know instead of it being something that is automatic or something that's free well it's kind of almost free so for two mana you're getting the one two bird and you're getting the two energy counters somewhere and you can use those in different ways and that's the coolest part is that all these energy things and they're so hard to evaluate because all of these energy things kind of they interlock it's not this one card anymore. It's this one card's impact on whether you have a consulate surveillance sometimes that matters, a console shield guard sometimes that matters. There's plenty of other cards we'll get to that matter. So sometimes you're just playing this not so much because it, it does anything that it, it has on the card. You're playing it because it's a two mana one two flyer that gives you energy. And sometimes it'll give you the evasion to win the game. So if you're playing energy, <clears throat> seems like a no-brainer. If you're not, Mm, this kind of this this is a card that I would not feel bad leaving on the sidelines because I just couldn't really take advantage of what it's doing for you. Next up is Fairgrounds Warden. This is a white and two generic mana, uncommon, one three dwarf soldier. Excuse me. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until Fairgrounds Warden leaves the battlefield. So. So this is your Banishing Priest for the set, basically. And now, instead of a two white and a generic mana, it's just a white and two generic mana, so it's even splashable, which is great. It's on a 1-3 body. That's good. It should be able to block, too, as well. Uh, this is an always 100% playable, always 100% awesome in sealed card in draft. Absolutely. Could see some constructive play. Banisher Priest did see constructive play. However, it was also a 2-2 and not a 1-3, and that sometimes matters uh, because, you know, being able to take out 10% of a life total with a swing is different than 5%, so that's so that matters. However, this guy is an all-star and limited, and he's always great, and you should always play him. Fantastic Fairgrounds Warden. Fragmentize is next. It is a one white common sorcery that destroys target artifact or enchantment with converted mana cost four or less. Now, Disenchant is a card. They don't really make them anymore, the Disenchant anymore, uh, because it's a white and a generic mana for an instant destroyed target artifact or enchantment, which you probably know these days is naturalized, um, amongst other sort of different variants they've done. Uh, so this is, you know, yet sort of another Disenchant variant. I think it's very good. It's very powerful on the sidelines. It's more likely a card that you're going to bring in. Now, for or limited in a world full of artifacts and full of very powerful artifacts this card is more than likely main deckable and more than likely very good uh, you should you should have targets for this more or less every time now it is a common and you might get multiples so you might keep multiples in the sideboard just in case so you can bring them in you know in case you see a whole lot of four or less cost artifacts however when you do this is going to be great so disenchants in an artifact based block are always very powerful so you got to make sure that in sealed I keep at least one of those around. I would like to keep one of those around because you kind of need to have it in the later game. Oftentimes there's an artifact, there's an enchantment that's giving you problems. Uh, but this type of block, they kind of engineer it to do so. So in Constructed, maybe, probably not because it's sorcery speed. That's a problem. Um, it does have the right mana cost. It's as cheap as they can make it. But not everything is kind of going to see play based on its ability. And the four or less is a thing. Maybe it would get there if it if it hit more stuff, for example. But regardless, I think Fragmentize is a powerful card. Very, very good and limited that you should be playing often. Now, Fumigate. <laughs> first of all, Fumigate is a fantastic card name. 
High five. Uh, so Fumigate is a two white, three generic mana rare sorcery that destroys all creatures. You gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. So uh, so this is really powerful. Uh, this is clearly a bomb rare and limited. And, you know, you just you engineer a board state in which you're able to kill other creatures and kill just a few of yours. You're gaining a whole bunch of life. That's a big deal. Uh, and you're able to follow that up with however many creatures you would like. Uh, so this is the Wrath of God of the format. And there are, whole, there are a whole bunch of sort of Wrath of God variants. And this is one of the best. This is a fantastic Wrath of God, as it were. Um, I could see this seeing constructed play. The ability to uh, a lot of times the problems with control decks is that they'd have to tap out to play their big sweeper and when they would play their big sweeper they wouldn't get enough kind of out of it that it would stop their opponents well suddenly you're able to destroy the board and then gain a whole bunch of life as a, as a result of doing that and that's very very powerful so uh, so I could see it happening in that regard otherwise you know in limited easy first pick absolute bomb rare always play it fantastic every time fumigate Gearshift Ace is next. It is a white and a generic mana for an uncommon 2-1 dwarf pilot. It has first strike, and whenever it crews a vehicle, that vehicle gains first strike until end of turn. So this card is very, very powerful. Vehicles are very powerful, at least what little I've seen of them and heard about them. Uh, so this is a card that you want to play. It's a great two-drop, and it makes all of your vehicles awesome. So even if you don't have a vehicle, even if you, you've literally got no vehicles in your sealed pool, or you, you just didn't, for whatever reason, didn't see them in your draft, uh, this guy is still playable. A two-mana, two-one first strike is fine, but being able to give that bonus to your vehicles is just that much better. There's a reason it's uncommon. You're not going to see it that often because it is that powerful. Uh, you want to play this every single time the card is very good uh we'll not probably see any constructive play i just i mean come on it's like a silly two one for two so you know let's not get crazy but in limited fantastic glint sleeve artisan first of all it's a sweet name see sometimes the names can be sweet it is a white and two generic mana 2-2. Two -two. Uh, it is a common dwarf artificer with fabricate of one. So it could be a 3-3 three -three for three. Or it could be a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1. One -one. So this gives you options, which gives you power, which means you should be playing it. Um, I like this card a lot. I love the, the ability to kind of choose whether or not you want it to be a 3-3 three -three all of a sudden or you want it to be a 2-2 two -two and a 1-1. One -one. Often, I think you'll want it to be a 3-3 three -three because 3-3s three -three for three are very powerful. Um, but having the option always great sometimes you need chump blockers sometimes you just need to, to swap them up for whatever reason very very good so this isn't like oh my god you know windmill slam or anything but it is a very solid white creature that i'm pretty much going to be happy playing almost all the time herald of the fair is a one white two generic mana three two common human and when he enters the battlefield target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn so this is very much a tempo play uh kinsbale skirmisher i believe uh is a card like it and this is way back this is from lorwin man we're talking what 10 years ago it's ridiculous uh and it was a two mana two two that gave plus one plus one until end of turn to another creature when he entered the battlefield and it was very awesome very much playable and we're talking a card from 10 years ago so this card is awesome and super playable and very good on the curve and what you want to be doing if you're able to play like gear shift ace into herald of the fair that's fantastic if you're able to play any card in the herald of the fair you're able to give something just that much more often as you as you'll find yourself you know sometimes you'll be stuck they'll have a three four and you'll have your three three and if it's just, if you could just make it high enough to get rid of get over that guy and this is one of those creatures you're able to hold it you don't necessarily run it on turn three you're able to use it to your advantage or you're able to just keep pressing the advantage because a three mana three power guy is relevant Impeccable Timing is next, and it is a white and a generic mana for a common instant. It says Impeccable Timing deals three damage to target attacking or blocking creature. This is good old-fashioned white removal. Uh, we'll get to some that's even better here shortly, but regardless, uh, it is a good combat trick. This is combat trick through and through. Obviously works really well with your first strikers, but it is fine all by itself just as a piece of removal. This isn't a card that I feel like I really like multiples of because... Three damage is a thing, but I think you'll see a lot of four toughness. So that's so that's something you kind of have to deal with. And that's, those are numbers that they kind of tweak to make these types of removal spells be really interesting. Because if it just killed everything, I would just be like, windmill slam, first pick, always play, see you later, let's go. But no, the, the ability to kind of determine whether or not you want this type of spell or how many of this type of spell uh, is important. Uh, usually it's well, it's good enough to play at least one in your limited decks because of the power level sort of inherent to it. It kills all your little creatures that your opponent may play, uh, kills fly 
flyers and things like that uh, can muck up when they're trying to double block. One, you know, for example. So there's there's lots of ways to blow out your opponent in in with the, with a card like this. But there's also just the same that like, your opponent has things that are too large uh, or too overwhelming for a card like this to stop. Up next is Inspired Charge. Uh, it is a two white, two generic mana, common instant. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Uh, we've seen this card before. It's been printed a few times. Uh, it's a fine card. It's never been really good for me. That's been kind of the problem. Like, yes, it pumps your whole team. It doesn't really give them enough toughness. That's kind of a problem. Uh, Sometimes you just don't have the the team, you know, like in your mind, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to have like four dudes out and they will play this and blah, 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 and deal a million damage and they're dead. It's like, uh, it doesn't really work out that way. And oftentimes that much mana for that little of a bonus. And sometimes you're only pumping like one guy, like one guy, you know, before over here, when we talked about built to last, you got plus two, plus two for a single mana. This is plus two, plus one. And imagine if you only affected one creature. So the, the Christmas land value is high, but the actual value is pretty low, and I don't really like this card. Master Tink Trinketeer? Wow, Master Trinketeer. We have a Trinketeers in Magic, ladies and gentlemen. It is a one white, two generic mana, three two, rare dwarf artificer, servos and thopters you control, get plus one, plus one. And for a white and three generic mana colon, you create a one one colorless servo artifact creature token. This card is awesome. This card is 100% always playable, very, very good and limited. Uh, first pick, I don't know, uh, but it's very good. It's pumping the, uh, every, other creature to every other creature token that you're making, more or less, within reason, is going to get a bonus by this guy. It gives you the ability to pump your mana into something. That's its best feature, is that you're able to literally just pump four mana to make a 2-2. Two -two. Four mana to make a 2-2. Two -two. Four mana to make a 2-2. Two -two. So at the end of the turn, if you got mana, you're able to put it in. So mana sinks like this are very important. So it's not necessarily Windmill Slam, but it's 100% always play. Uh, because this card is good th through and through, even as a three mana 3-2. Three it's not that bad, but it has two really awesome abilities. And I will always play this card, and I think it's going to be great. Ninth Bridge Patrol is next. A one white, one generic mana, one one. It is a common dwarf soldier that says whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, you put a plus one plus one counter on Ninth Bridge Patrol. So this card is really interesting because clearly your opponent doesn't want to trigger it. Your opponent doesn't want to give you counters on your Ninth Bridge Patrol because it only takes a creature or two for things to kind of start getting out of hand. Suddenly your two mana gives you a three, three, or your two mana gives you a four, four. Now again, we're also talking about, you know, sort of awesome scenarios, good scenarios and whatnot. But, uh, and there were, there's cards in the past, like for example, uh, Algae Garial, I think, and this is from Shards, uh, which had Hexproof or Shroud. Uh, and says whenever another creature dies, it gets plus one, plus one counter. Uh, this isn't as good as that because it only counts your creatures and kind of gives your opponent the choice, which in my mind always says that this card is bad uh, because your opponents can craft a scenario, whether it's how they block, how they use their removal spells, how they use their burn spells to make sure that Ninth Bridge, Ninth Bridge Patrol doesn't really do what you want it to do. And that, so in that case, I think it's a bad card. We'll move on. Uh, pressure Point is next. This is a reprint from Konzatar Kier Block. Uh, a one white, one generic mana, common instant, tap target creature, and draw a card. So in that in that format, it was kind of okay. And in this format, it sounds like it's going to be okay. And so it's just kind of meh. Like it replaces itself, and that's great. Tapping a creature is rarely worth a spell. Um, but, and if it didn't tap, you know, if it didn't draw a card, clearly we, we wouldn't even be talking about like, this card's crap, move on. Um, but, you know, again, it was like sort of, it was marginal and it wasn't as powerful as I expected it to be. Uh, so in that regard, I would suggest we, I, I would suggest you not really play with this one unless you kind of had to. This to me is sort of like a 23rd card. If I have to play it, at least it replaces itself. Uh, Propeller Pioneer is next, a one white, three generic mana, two one, common human artificer that has flying and fabricate one. And this card is awesome because it is either a four mana three two flyer, which is a snapping drake, fine rate, or it is still a two one flyer that gives you a one one that can chump block or attack alongside or whatever. So again, choice is good. Fabricate's very powerful. This card is very good. It's not necessarily first pickable and limited, but it is always playable in your limited deck. So if you get in your seal pool, make sure you play it if you're playing white. Uh, so in that regard, very powerful card in limited, going nowhere anywhere else. Um, but it's powerful in that it gives you options, and I will always play it happily. 
Refurbish is next. It is a one white, three generic mana, the one white, three generic mana, uncommon sorcery that returns target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this is Zombify for artifacts, basically. Uh, and so they kind of sort of finally made it. And with as many awesome artifacts in this set and artifact creatures in this set, this to me looks very much like you would play it sort of like you would play Zombify. Now Zombify, if I recall correctly, lets you choose any creature in any graveyard, and this is only your graveyard, so that matters. But ultimately, it kind of lets you rebuy your best artifact, which is probably going to be your best artifact creature, and which means your opponent has already sort of dealt with it in some manner already. So not only does it kind of help against discard type effects, it just lets you get your best thing twice. So I don't know if I want to play a ton of these, but clearly if you got an amazing artifact creature in your pool or amazing artifact period, and maybe an artifact that you have to use up, like we'll talk about later, this is a great card to kind of supplement that and make sure you kind of keep that engine rolling. So uh, I think this is a very much, very much a playable card. I don't think I really want to play a ton of them if I got multiples, uh, but I think one of sounds perfect. Revoke Privileges is next. It's a white and two generic mana, common enchantment aura, uh, enchant creature, enchanted creature can't attack, block, or crew vehicles. <laughs> Love the flavor on this one. The flavor of this one's awesome. It's just like, you know, you got your license revoked. This is the license revoked card. It's ridiculous. So the, the ability to uh, to essentially, you know, kind of kind of pull them over and take their license and you can't do nothing, you know, that's awesome. So uh, this is a pacifism variant. Pacifism variants are always playable and limited. They're always first pickable or early pickable if you got a bomb rare instead. Uh, you'll always play it and you'll, you'll play every copy that you can find. Every copy you got, you play it. It's going to be great. Yeah, it tacks on the cruise thing. I just think that's great flavor. That doesn't mean that it really does anything beyond, you know, just being pacifism number 497. Servo Exhibition is next. It's a white and a generic mana for an uncommon sorcery that creates two 1-1 one, one colorless servo artifact creature tokens. This is a very good card. It's two mana for essentially what you could imagine as a 2-2, two -two, but split into two different bodies. Sometimes it matters when you play artifacts. That's a thing. So it's going to put, it's going to give you two into the battlefield triggers for artifact things. Uh, and sometimes that matters, particularly in white red decks that we'll get to. Um, but otherwise, I mean, you know, yeah, it's not raise the alarm. It's not a combat trick and it has to be sorcery speed, but it is probably going to give you triggers that you're looking for. Or at the very least, it's a great two drop. I mean, it's a great, you know, two drop spell in your, in your kind of two drop column that you have there, uh, you know, as you lay out your deck. It's great because you need, you need to do something early in the game. Even if it's not overwhelming, even if you're just making some one ones, it's still good. It's still very much playable uh, and should be getting a lot of really awesome triggers as a result. Sky Swirl Harrier is a white and four generic mana, three, four flyer. Hmm. I'll play it and I'll like it. In fact, I'll love it because it's only one white mana, one white and four generic mana. So, uh, you know, I've played five mana, three, three for strikers, for example, and that's almost overpowered. It's kind of ridiculous. And so with another extra point of toughness and an easier casting cost, I think this card is very, very good. I will happily play a whole bunch of copies. Uh, this is the type of card that if you have three or four of it, for whatever reason, uh, it's probably a little too much to play all of those. But, you know, this is the type of card I want two of. I want two in my sealed pool. I want the perfect number of two. I think this card is super sweet. It is five mana. You gotta, you gotta, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, but you know, good limited cards are good limited cards, and this is a very good limited card. Sky Whaler's shot. <laughs> this card kills me. Uh, it is a white and two generic mana for an uncommon instant that says destroy target creature with power three or greater, and then you scry one. This card is amazing for what it does. It's kind of ridiculous and a little unprecedented. I mean, clearly we have the path to exile, swords to plowshares of the world, and I'm not saying this is that. I'm just saying this is some of the best removal, sort of pound for pound, mana for mana, that doesn't kind of cheat like path to exile type effects do uh, in a long time. So there was, I think it was, it was Vanquish something. It was the Theros version was five mana sorcery speed, and this gives you three mana instant speed. This card is amazing. Uh, this card is 100% playable. I want infinite copies of this. I want to first pick it in draft if there's nothing that's ridiculously bomby in the rare slot, and I will play every single copy I can find sealed. I want every copy. This card is fan freaking tastic. It destroys everything you care about. If it's got three power or more, it's like you're usually worried about it. If it's a two, two or a two power or less and eh, whatever, but not only do you get to kill the thing, you get a bonus on top of it. So this card is bonkers. Good and limited, unbelievable could see constructed play just because it, it hits everything that matters. 
Well, it doesn't hit everything that matters. It does the instant speed, so it's the right speed. Three mana, yeah, you know, you kind of want it to cost less, but again, it's basically killing everything relevant, which is fantastic. Tasseled Dromedary. Tasseled Dromedary, y'all. For one white, it's an 04 common camel. That's it. One man 04. <laughs> This card's bad. Don't play this thing. <laughs> it's cool. I like that it exists. You know, like, I like, I appreciate that we can dress up a camel, make a magic card, talk about it for, like, 12 seconds, and then move on with our lives. All right. Thriving Ibex is next. It is a white and three generic mana, 2-4 common goat. When it enters the battlefield, you get a couple of energy counters. You get two. And whenever it attacks, you may pay two energy counters. And if you do, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So I think this card is good. I don't think it's, like, amazing, but I think, it is, I think it's on the good side. Um, mainly because it's a little slow. Uh, you have to play it and then wait a turn. At that point, you know, it's just turn four. Uh, you know, so you're, you're giving your opponent their turn five, potentially. Uh, and then, you know, you won't be able to swing in. You want it to be a 3-5. Four mana 3-5s haven't been, like, amazing or anything in the past anyway. Uh, it only really kind of gets good if you're able to trigger it multiple times. So if you're kind of building the energy deck, which I think is definitely going to be an archetype that you can kind of sense and that you can draft and that you'll find yourself in when you look at your sealed decks. Uh, you know, I think Thriving Ibex is kind of right there. Uh, so if it, you're playing the energy deck, I think it's good. If you're not, it's probably just not good enough because, yeah, you're able to, you know, it triggers the one time. It's a 3-5 for four mana but three fires for four mana are not that exciting to start with so meh uh toolcraft exemplar is next and it is fantastic it is a one white one one rare dwarf artificer and at the beginning of your at the beginning of combat on your turn if you control an artifact it gets plus two plus one until end of turn and if you control three or more artifacts it gains first strike until end of turn <clears throat> so in constructed this card is bananas because it is the best one drop i've seen in a long time uh, one mana to basically bash in for three when you're playing a Thraven Inspector right behind it, for example, uh, is very, very powerful. Uh, giving it first strike later is good, often irrelevant, may sneak up on some people, and you might blow some people out because they'll forget about the second half of the card. Uh, but regardless, you know, turn, breaking this guy out on turn one, playing an artifact on turn two is probably one of the best limited clocks you're ever going to see. Uh, you know, those are those are Delver stats. Now, not Delver with, uh, with evasion stats, but still... Very, very powerful. Very good. I expected to see play in a white weenie, white green aggro, white red aggro type thing. Uh, you know, the, it is it is priced to move. It's good, clean living. Love, love Toolcraft Exemplar. Uh, Trusty Companion is next. Heck yeah. They made a doggy hyena thing. Uh, it's a white and a generic mana for a 3-2 uncommon hyena with vigilance, and it cannot attack alone. Hmm. But it can block by itself. Do note that. Uh, but unfortunately, the drawback <clears throat> the drawback is so harsh for the upside of just to be able to attack with a 3-2 Vigilance you know, creature. Uh, it's nice that it has flavor applications, because I think it clearly does. It's really cool that we have a trusty companion. It makes sense. Well, it is a trusty companion. Well, it you know, works alongside you, so it can't attack alone. That's, that's cool. But ultimately, in terms of you know, power level and gameplay and what it's worth, it's not really good enough. Visionary Augmenter, also known as Ripley, is next. Uh, so if you've ever seen the Aliens movie, for example, uh, by James Cameron, absolute sci-fi classic, uh, Ripley, the main character, gets into what's called the power loader, and she's just she's destroying stuff and uh, looking very much like this. Uh, but Visionary Augmenter is a two-white, two-generic mana, two-one uncommon dwarf artificer with Fabricate 2. So either it's a 4-3 for four mana or a 2-1 and 2-1-1s for four mana. Either way, a great rate... I'll play it every time. To the ability to make three bodies or the ability to make a 4-3 is, is good, is powerful. The four power is actually sort of that magical number, that magical mark where we see a lot of three fours, and that's creature, and that, and that gets you the creature just big enough to kill those types of creatures. Of course, they will, they will trade. As, as a result, it's just having three toughness. But regardless, the, the choices are good. The choices are powerful. I think it's uncommon for a reason, uh, and you, know, you should definitely be running Visionary Augmenter in your uh, limited decks. Lastly is Wisp Weaver Angel. This is a... Restoration Angel, this is not, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Wisp Weaver Angel is a two-white, four-generic mana, uncommon 4-4 four -four angel who flies, of course. And when it enters the battlefield, you may exile another target creature you control and then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So uh, so Restoration Angel plus Thragtusk was an entire sort of 
like standard thing that happened for a very long time. And it was a Restoration Angel was a one white, three generic mana, three four flash. This is a six mana, four four flyer. So is it good? Yes, it's good. Is it amazing? Not quite. Would I play it? Heck yeah. Like that ability is still very, very strong. Like not only do you get this awesome 4-4 flyer for, for six mana, you get that sweet ability on top of it. So so that is not to be ignored or or sort of taken for granted, if you will, because I think we've already seen multiple times, literally just the card we talked about had a fantastic enter the battlefield trigger that you can choose, you know, I want to choose to make one once. And then later, when you're actually playing your Wisp Weaver Angel, okay, I'm going to upgrade my Visionary Augmenter into a 4-3. You know, that's really sweet. That's a fantastic ability. So this is a very powerful card. It's very good and limited. It's one of those that you kind of got to, you got to make sure that you have enough mana and or enough targets if you want to run multiples of these, but it's still very powerful. It's a huge, you know, evasive monster. Uh, and one that I'm happy to see a lot. So that wraps up all of the white cards in Kaladesh. Uh, I think this I think this set is fantastic and we're just getting started. So I want to thank you guys for joining me here. I'll be back soon with all of the blue cards from Kaladesh as we continue our complete set review. So thanks for watching everybody and until next time Magic players, this is Evan Irwin. Tapping the cards so you don't have to.